presenting an R package that was first developed here in Brizzy in collaboration with my PhD supervisor, Kerry Mengerson, as well as the staff of the Radio Radiation Oncology MARTA Center, particularly uh, Kathy Hargrave. And I'm going to begin by introducing the Bayesian model-based approach to image segmentation. And then I'm going to show a couple of examples, one in satellite remote sensing, and the second example will be in medical image analysis, if I have some time. So the mathematical view of image segmentation is that for each pixel in the image, we want to assign a latent or unobserved label. And one common way to do that is under the assumption of conditional normality or additive Gaussian noise. However, other noise models such as Poisson noise could also be used instead here. And following the data augmentation approach of Dempster, Laird and Rubin, we end up with a, what's called a complete data likelihood. So the likelihood of the observed data, which is our pixels Y, as well as the unobserved labels Z. And they are conditioned on these parameters, the mean and variance of each mixture component, as well as this parameter beta, which I'll talk more about later. So this is a simple example for generating a synthetic artificial image where all of the pixels are independent. So we just pull our labels from a uniform distribution with three possible labels. And then we have three different means. And for simplicity in this case, the variances of each component are the same although this needn't necessarily be the case in practice. And then we add our Gaussian noise on at the end. And so on the left, this is what the data looks like. And then when we view that as a one-dimensional histogram, you can see how the three different mixture components overlap with each other slightly. And this creates difficulty for thresholding methods such as Otsu's, because there's no optimal point where you can split the two mixture components. There are some members you're always going to misclassify. So instead, we take a probabilistic approach. And in this case, we're using the R package and the function Gibbs GMM, which stands for Gaussian Mixture Model. And this is going to update all of the parameters using these priors that I specified in a list. And we run that for a bunch of iterations and we get back the original uh, true values of these parameters that we started with. So far, so good. However, in real images, the neighboring pixels are not independent of each other. And so we want to include some kind of spatial correlation structure in our model. Um, so this, sorry, this is the example of the independent one, I think. Yes. So this is just our classification results. And you see we get pretty close to the original image. And this is under independence. So that we have the same number of green and red and blue pixels as each other. Now, when we introduce spatial structure into the model, this is where this parameter beta comes in. And this controls how similar neighboring labels are to each other. And the likelihood has this standard Gibbs form of a normalized uh, exponential function. And inside the exponential, we have two things. We have the parameter beta, which is known as the inverse temperature for complicated reasons. And this sum, which is the sum of neighbors that have the same label. 
And so if all of your neighbours have one label, then you're more likely to have the same label as them. And with this very simple model, we can generate quite different kinds of images. So this is varying that parameter beta from zero in the top left and then increasing from left to right and top to bottom. This point is what is called the critical temperature, which is the largest value of beta where you still have equal numbers of red, blue and green in the image. Once you go beyond this critical threshold, one of those three colours will begin to dominate. And most images we encounter in real life are in this supercritical regime where you have one background uh, label and then you have other things superimposed on top of that that you're interested in classifying. So we'd like to know what, um, what this parameter beta should be for a given image rather than tuning it by hand. We can, similar to the previous example, we can generate synthetic data. So here we're using the function SW no data, which stands for the Swenson Wang algorithm, which is a way of flipping pixel labels to get to the distribution that you're targeting. So we tell it in this case for a fixed value of beta um, and 200 iterations to generate us a synthetic image and as before we just add on our Gaussian noise at the end. Now we use the function MCMC pots to fit the model so that stands for Markov chain Monte Carlo and here I'm showing just, yeah, not too bad, uh, the trace plot of this beta parameter over the iterations. So you can see quite quickly it finds roughly what the value that beta should be and on the right we can see that the mode of that distribution is in fact the true value of beta. And we can show similarly for the other parameters the means and the variances are all treated as free parameters in this model. So here is the ground truth that we generated using our Swenson Wang algorithm. And here you can see that the blue pixels outnumber all of the other pixels. So that is like our background label. And on the right hand side you can see the image classification. So here we have some uncertainty about particular pixels, whether they have that value or not. But if you look at the probability of the true value, we've done reasonably well in recovering the original labels. So this parameter beta creates a lot of headaches because unlike all of the other parameters in the model where the posterior Conditional posterior distribution is available in closed form and we can just do a Gibbs sampler. For beta, we can't uh, even do a Metropolis-Hastings ratio. And the reason for that is this normalising constant, which doesn't cancel out because it depends on the value of the parameter that we're trying to estimate. And so this makes life a little bit difficult, but there are various methods and in particular a class of methods known as pseudo-marginal methods that enable you to get around this intract computational intractability. So I created this package during my PhD as a kind of a toolbox as well as a testing ground for these different algorithmic approaches. And I've implemented a whole bunch of them in C++ in the package so that you can try those out and then you have the flexibility to implement your own algorithms and compare with the existing approaches. 
One I will specifically point out is the exchange algorithm, which does give exact inference for beta under very strong assumptions. And unfortunately, in practice, those assumptions are almost always violated. So even with the exact algorithm, there's a certain level of approximation involved. Um, and all of these methods are described further in these two papers cited below. So I'll now describe the first application of this data. So here we have a satellite image of Brisbane, where we are now. This is the Brisbane River running diagonally across the image. And this is the histogram of the pixel values. So the goal here is to be able to separate out and classify land use as either urban or um, vegetation or water. And this is the application of the algorithm using five labels. So I've used two different labels for vegetation, depending on whether it's dense or sparse vegetation. And then we can see, so this is Gardens Point in this, this green park in the corner here. And we're across the river from Gardens Point. This is South Bank along here. And so it's done a very good job of separating the dense urban or industrial areas of the city from the more suburban parts of the city. And we've also separated the river and Moreton Bay from everything else as well. With five components, this is the posterior distribution, the posterior mean for the locations of the mixture. And then on the right, we have our posterior for beta. And what you can see here is ABC, which is approximate Bayesian computation, um, has, is over-dispersed relative to the other two methods. So AEA in black is the approximate exchange algorithm. So it should be the closest to the true posterior. And I'll just briefly uh, talk about this second application, which is to three-dimensional image analysis. And in this case, we have various organs in the body. So this is a CT scan, which is a type of three-dimensional X-ray. And we know the locations of these organs at a certain point in time. And what we want to find is where those organs are at a future time point. So I have a spatial prior that's also implemented in the R package that we use in order to help label the pixels. And then we have organ and patient specific spatial priors for each of the labels. And when we put them all together, that gives us a Gaussian random field. And then we can combine this with the observed CT scan to give us our final image segmentation. And th these results are described in this paper in, in CSDA. So to, to conclude, this R package can be used for both two-dimensional and three-dimensional image stacks. At the moment, it only supports univariate pixels. So each pixel is only a single value. We have Gibbs sampling as well as Swenson Wang algorithms for updating the labels, the Z parameter. And then we have a whole ton of algorithms and more uh, in development for estimating beta, which is the intractable likelihood. I've used RCPP Armadillo for the computational engine to give a speed advantage in all of the loops that I have to do in these algorithms. And the updates of the labels are run in parallel 
using OpenMP. The full uh, documentation is available on the Package Down website and the package is available on CRAN. Thank you very much. Oh yes, so the question was what uh, future features are we planning for this package? So I mentioned that with the assumption of conditional no normality that could easily be replaced with other distributions and in particular what I'm very keen to look at is multivariate normal distributions so that we can handle multispectral and potentially hyperspectral image analysis with the package. So this is why we want to do the multivariate analysis because using a single summary like NDVI there's limits that you run into as far as how well you can distinguish different types of vegetation and this is probably pretty close to as good as you can get um, given that this is the, the one dimensional summary that we have to work with. I think if, if you had uh, something like Landsat or, Landsat or MODIS data where you had a bunch of different uh, spectra that you could combine, then you might be able to do much better in terms of fine 